What's going on, Minecraft fans? My name's Luke the Notable. Welcome to 100 Days of Minecraft Pocket Edition. In this video, I'll be playing 100 Days of Minecraft on my phone. Yeah, my phone. Why? Because this is the best way to play Minecraft, obviously. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Tell you the truth, a lot of people have suggested this. They want to see me suffer. Minecraft on a phone can be quite tough. Gotta say, though, I know people who play Minecraft on a tablet or phone exclusively, and they're pretty good at it, so maybe I will be too after these 100 days. But I gotta say, at this point, I was terrible with the controls. My fat dad finger could hardly do anything. Oh, look at that. It's the Blood Moon. Funny, I don't remember installing any mods. My estate wasn't much by the end of day one, but with how slow I am with these controls, I'm proud. I mined at night for the sake of efficiency. I know the ancient hymns are against this. I really have no confidence in myself. I'm just gonna stay around here for a bit before I go exploring more. I fought a single drown today, and it was pretty much the hardest fight I've ever done in Minecraft. I was very hopeful I could get a trident drop here. They're more common in bedrock Minecraft, but that didn't happen. Don't know how, but it's already Blood Moon time. Better get back in the mine. I had some lag problems in the mine, and these problems do happen a lot at first. Just give me a break, I'm literally on a phone. I'm also not great with the timing of these days, especially at first. Here it's already nighttime on day three, messed something up. As lovely as my compound is, I'm gonna have to find a village. There's no way I'm gonna get anything done without the help of some villagers. Morning of day four, wandering traders showed up. That was a big mistake. I'm not a fan of living in the snow, so I set out for better land today. Who designed the boat controls on pocket? This is, oh, it's, it's awkward. This is too fast. I don't have a license or insurance. Somehow, I made it to a village alive. Tomorrow, I start the theft. Give me the beets or get beet, farmer. Beets always taste better when you know they were going to feed someone's family. It was a busy day of felonies in this snowy town, and right as I thought I was finished, I was attacked by the polar bear of justice. I was forced to run, and I can hardly even do that right. Just get in the door! Easily, the worst part about the suburbs is all the whites. Slowly took out the polar bear. I was fine, but that definitely gave me a scare. There's no hardcore mode in Pocket Edition, so if I died, the world wouldn't be deleted. But that's good, because I'm on Pocket Edition, so my chance of death is fairly high. Not gonna die tonight though, and even got myself some stolen iron armor. Day six, I'm back on the road again, looking for more land to acquire from the wheat. Really, I was just looking for anything not in the snow, but found this nice town in an oak forest. That'll work. The terrain is very dangerous with a massive hole in the center of town, but I'll take that over polar bears any day. I've gotta find some place to call home soon though. My inventory is getting stuffed full of stolen goods. I did say this town was very dangerous. That hole in the center is a massive cave system. Some of the town spawned down here. I really have no idea what to do with it. And yeah, after getting harassed by zombies all day, I think I'm gonna give up on this town. Hit the ocean, it was laggy, I don't know why, my phone's pretty nice. Lagged my way over to a flower meadow, I think I can set up shop here. Seriously, it was so laggy, so I ended this day early, I gotta figure this out. Alright, so I think this is still technically day seven, but we're gonna call it day eight, cause that's what the file says, remember. I'm on a phone! Time to build a cobblestone house to settle in, it makes the Minecraft pros mad, but they're seven and can't type a mean comment without asking their mom. If it took me all day to build a cobblestone shack with a mouse and keyboard, I'd be very embarrassed, but on Pocket, that's just standard. I want you all to know that I'm not getting used to it at all, and my phone is starting to get hot, my hands hurt. But hey, at least I'm not homeless anymore, look at that. So I'm really not sure what happened day nine, but pretty much the entirety of the footage is just me chilling in the house, and that's it. I think I just messed up the recording and was waiting until morning, which it is now. Hooray. All right, now I can finally sort of explore the land. I really hope there's something good out here. A lot of death traps. I'm positive I'll fall in that hole. Yeah, I really didn't find anything after searching all day, mostly because I'm so slow. Zombies started bashing in my door at night. That's what I get for playing on hard mode. He was on my land and committing a crime. I had every right to take him down. I have no trust in my ability to fight, but I have every trust in a wall, so I built one tonight. Feeling a little more safe, I built a mine. I don't know if you know this, but you have to mine in Minecraft. So I mined through the night, even though my phone's processor was burning my palms. Good morning, it's day 11 and I'm still not even really sure what I'm doing here. I made a bridge, I'm not sure where it goes yet, but sometimes those are the best bridges. You know, Tors would really like this meadow. There's not enough profits here for me though. I didn't go very far, I don't want to get lost, I have no idea how to turn on coordinates. Made a little cane farm though, I'm sure eventually that'll be useful. Oh, I didn't show you where I'm sleeping, this is where, feels a lot like college. So after another day of exploring, I stumbled upon that town I found a few days ago, I guess it's meant to be. Stole all their things, what a great way to start a relationship. Took a better look at it today, it needs a lot of labor and these lazy villagers won't help at all. But I'll own them and their children in return, so, you know, it's a fair deal. Day 13, I conquered Ohio. It was surprisingly easy. They practically begged me to take it. Instead of trying to integrate the bottom and top sections of the town, I'm just gonna leave them. It's too much work. Doable with a mouse or controller, or maybe if I had any skill with this, but I'm still just really bad. I did make a little staircase down there just to get the villagers out, but I kind of regret it. It's a huge safety risk. 
Well, I guess that's what they get for living in Ohio. Public works continued day 14 until a witch poisoned me. Took some time to heal up and went to go handle her, but I'm really bad at combat and only have a stone sword. And she absolutely dunked on me with a potion of harming and I had to run away again. And I decided to run away from all of Ohio today. I suggest that for all of its residents. I still made myself busy chopping trees in the forest to sell to the Fletcher. And when I came back, I brought walls. You know what's happening next. With a wall, I'll feel a lot better about living here and the villagers won't escape, which they do pretty often. I walled off this side first. It's right next to a dense forest and monsters just love spawning there. Then I chopped down the forest. Anything to thin the population of the indigenous. Safety was a great motivation, but I can also turn this wood into money, so I kept chopping. Day 16, I needed more cobblestone for the wall and took this as an opportunity to look at the cave. It's big. I promise I'll go down there eventually, but I need to get more fluent with my controls. And you know this wall ain't gonna build itself. You already know the villagers ain't helping. Got the most critical sections done today, but I really won't feel comfortable until it's all done. It's really not a big wall. It shouldn't have taken me this long. I must just have arthritis. It's not done, but it's already starting to feel a lot more like home. I even set myself aside a little shack for sleeping. While I'm fixing, I'm also profiting, and they're starting to come in nicely, but it is slow. I don't trust myself at all mining for good resources, so these villagers are gonna be a crutch for me. Other than money making, I'm also working out what to do here. I really don't have an idea. It's gonna look bad in the end, I'm just warning you. Though even without the wall, the tree line is safely receding like my hairline. The wall has eaten up all my cobblestones, so I'm gonna try to make a generator today. It's gonna go fine. Preliminary tests seem to show everything was running normal. All right, let's mine up some cobblestone. Oh, it's broken. To make things worse, I don't have a diamond pick, so I'm gonna have to live with my failure. So I went back home, mined normally, like a peasant. Mining was a good idea. I'm still rocking stone tools, gross. Hit the deeps late day 19. I'm not sure what that means. This is my job and I'm still a noob. Mining that stuff is pretty slow with stone tools, so I'm gonna give up. I have enough cobble to make some good walls. So I walled. It's my favorite thing to do in this game. Besides subjugation, for the five-year-old, subjugation is what your mom does to your dad. Good progress on the wall, but I still have no idea what to do with the pit. It's been 20 days now. I'm getting a little more used to building. At least the placing of it. You know, it's coming along. That's why I waited to do the ugly bits last. This would have been hard even with a mouse. Though I really doubt there's any way you could make this all look good. I did my best. I have reached the point of not caring anymore and I just want this wall project to be done. I'm using andesite walls now. I know for a fact that dog was judging me. All right, it's ugly, but so is capitalism. Whatever. Even though I respawn when I die, I breathe a lot easier knowing that there's walls. I don't want to die. Who does? Some villagers escaped before I finished. And, uh, you know, I think they're just gonna live in exile. Now that I can finally call this place home, I'm gonna renovate this villager shack to be a little more usable. All I did was dig out a basement and I'm gonna use this for a storage room. Before going to bed that night, I taunted some zombies who wanted to live in the great state of Ohio. Went over to the cobblestone shack day 22. I'm gonna grab all my items. I myself am becoming a permanent resident of Ohio. Stuffed my items away and dug myself a new mine. You know, that was about it. Some days in Minecraft are like that. I kept on mining day 23. The stone tools in my inventory are mocking me. You'll never find diamonds. Don't even try. That effect looked pretty good because my ghastly dad teeth have never been fixed. Anyway, got some iron, some more coal, but like the voices in my head said, I wouldn't get diamonds. Mining away day 24, poked into a cave and was feeling kind of brave. Feeling a little better with the controls, I felt like I could handle a little spelunking and yeah, if I die, you know, I do come back. No diamonds, but I got some slimes. Maybe I can struggle my way to a redstone contraption. Sold the bounties to the good people of Ohio day 25. Even the iron, I don't really need it. The Fletcher's where I get most of my cash flow, selling him sticks is quite profitable. My next big goal is to get something automatic. All of my profits come from hard labor, but I don't really know how to do that, so I'm going back to mining. It's one of the few things I can do with these controls. But thanks to all my hard work mining, I got my first iron enchanted pickaxe today, and it only cost me some sticks. It's fast enough. I can go through the deeps late without getting a headache, so that's good. And bam! Dropped down in this cave and found some diamonds. Now that I know this whole cave is at diamond level, I'm gonna do some exploring. I didn't find anything. Except depression. I know I just got diamonds, but I really don't want to use them for tools, so I'm gonna get back to profit making. Chopping down the trees, burning my fingers, playing that pocket edition. You know, this video has given me some perspective. I really feel bad for the people that play this exclusively. I know you probably have no choice, but just know I feel for you. Oh, and apparently you can mine obsidian with iron, you just don't get it when it breaks, and it takes a long time. So I fixed my flaws today. Oh joy, another day of chopping. You know, the forest used to go all the way to the wall. Auto wood Wood farms are for quitters. I only say that because I don't know how to build one. If I ever found a jungle, I could find some bamboo and make a stick farm pretty easy, but that would require me adventuring and I really don't wanna, I'm scared. Oh, guess what I'm doing on day 29? Chopping. 
This time, spruce trees. They all stick the same. You know, I am getting close to diamond tools and getting close to turning this forest into a prairie. Chopped until the blood moon came out. Maybe tomorrow will be interesting. Making more Ohioans. Day 30, they love their bread. A lot. Naming the town Ohio was sort of a fan suggestion that I've just kind of rolled with now. I'm from Illinois, so I found it humorous. I also like pooping on Indiana and Wisconsin. Iowa, though? You're cool. Then I went back in the mine for more slimes and I rhymed, oh my. Okay, little awkward, uh, but I built a redstone contraption, just wasn't recording. Here it is, and uh, it doesn't work. This used to be a really overpowered way of getting tons and tons of sugar cane, and I was going to exploit it, but it doesn't work anymore. Sad. Bodie Boy built one on our Notable Craft server, and he was rich beyond belief. Unfortunately, I won't be. Day 32, I spent some time trying to convert this thing into something useful. Couldn't do it because I got my useless redstone degree online. I'm just gonna have to scrap it for parts. Not today, though. I felt too defeated. I just decommissioned it and went to bed. To make matters worse, my Fletcher disappeared. This can happen in Bedrock Minecraft. Sometimes they come back, but the best way to ensure they don't leave is by trapping them. Right, Toolsmith? Oh, oh yes, sir. Did I mention you look great today? Um, uh, uh, oh, oh, and uh, I saw that marvelous redstone machine you built. You're so intelligent, really you are. I was wondering, uh, when can I see my family? Go to bed. We'll talk about it next year. What just gone, but hey, a convenient baby just showed up. Child labor's illegal, so I have to wait for him to grow up. Figured I'd fix up the farm. It's an automatic farm, and here's the best part. It doesn't work. I'd like to say I'm fairly decent at Minecraft. I have no idea why I'm potatoing so hard in this video, but I am. That's it, I'm done with business. It's cave time and I don't even care if I die. You know, at least for combat with zombies and stuff, I'm feeling okay with the controls. My iron armor helps. But you gotta know diamond armor would make me feel even better. Material possessions are the only way to happiness. No diamonds, but a lot of iron, which eventually I can sell for diamonds, so there's that. Though I was determined and on day 36, I found myself some more diamonds. I'm surprised my phone can run these caves. Somehow it was lagging earlier on the open ocean. Either way, the caves are quite nice, even if they are infested with skeletons that I can't quite efficiently take down. No other diamonds, but at this point I've got all the ones I need. I can buy the rest. Speaking of buying diamonds, I now have a diamond axe. Just wasn't recording for me buying it. This day's only three minutes in true pocket edition fashion. I tried to play in the wild sometimes, and this is one of those days. I remember specifically I was in Little Caesars waiting for my pizza. And, you know, they're pretty fast, so day wasn't too long. Back to finding diamonds. Diamonds Day 38, a lot of them. I don't even really need them at this point. I'm really close to getting a diamond pick. Hey, there's more. Cave mining is the way. Maybe I'm strip mining wrong, but it seems like with the new caves update, cave mining, it's the way to go. I wish the shield worked differently. You have to crouch to use it, so you just slowly walk towards skeletons. It's annoying. Oh yeah, that's a lot of diamonds. Haters will say I put them there in creative, but I don't even know how to do that. Joke's on you. With all that loot, I went back up to the surface and bought myself my first diamond pickaxe. The enchants are pretty bad, but I can fix that, and hey, I bought it with sticks. Did a lot of smelting today from my long mining trip and ran out of coal, but I got some more. Now I'm setting my sights on some diamond armor. I'm sick of running around in iron. So, it's uh, back to chopping. I know we've seen a lot of it in this 100 days so far. It's just the fastest method I have, especially with my new diamond axe. Listen, I tried to cheese the game and make an automatic farm, but apparently it wants me to do hard labor, so here I am. Another day of chopping trees, diamond axe. It's a breeze. Green in my pocket in a way that I'm gonna stop it. And I'm always out here flossing soon I'll have some diamond armor LTN on the track, so hit that like button. Listen, day 41 was just more tree chopping, day 42 was just obsidian mining, I had to do something to make it interesting. Going to the nether soon though, that's what the obsidian's for, that'll be cool. Er, you know, I guess it'll be hot because it's hell. Made myself another portal, day 43. It was an absolute struggle with these pocket edition controls. There's worse nether spawns. At least I'm not in a crimson forest with tons of pigs. I hate those things. Mostly came down here for some quartz. I need them to make observers and maybe I can make an automatic farm for some good money. Mining in the nether on pocket is quite a hazard. You gotta remember that my hands block most of the screen. Survive today though. Maybe I'll actually be able to beat the game. Got my first bit of diamond gear, some boots. Feather falling two, that's nice. No, not feather falling two. I mean feather falling one. Feather falling as well. Why is it every time that I make something, I forget to record? Well, here's my sugarcane farm. It's not gonna produce much, but it's something automatic. That's a start. Yeah, all of today's footage is just me breaking it several times. After messing with the farm some more, day 46, I decided to beautify the town. And yes, cobblestone is beautiful. I just added steps where there needed to be steps. I can't afford another lawsuit. There were a few weird areas that aren't as weird now. Still a little weird, but I'm kind of lazy and don't want to fix them completely. You're welcome, villagers. You'll 
she'll pay for this in blood. Yeah, more landscaping, day 47, trim some dirt, added more stairs, that sort of thing. Eventually, I'd like to get rid of all the birthday candles on the ground, but you know, for safety, they're gonna stay for now. If there was another zombie outbreak, I think it'd be okay. Most of my important villagers are working from home. Started on an enchanting room, day 48, soon I'll have diamond armor, at least the ability to buy some, and I want it to be good. That is what all these cows are for. I need them for their skin. Hey, wait, is that a... Is that a pink sheep? Yeah, they're just like any other sheep. It's just very rare for one to spawn in the wild. Kind of notable. Welcome to your new prison. I mean, home. Mining away, day 49. I don't think I'm going to be able to buy a full set of diamond armor, but most of it. Yeah, these deep caves are very plentiful for diamonds. If I keep this up, I won't have to buy any. Oh no, a baby zombie with armor. How embarrassing it would be to die by that. Hey, more diamonds. What up? No, creeper. No! Ah, yes, mining on camera. So exciting. I don't understand why YouTubers don't do this more often. I'm working on a couple different objectives right now, trying to find a stronghold, diamond armor, and I swear by the end of this video I'll get all of them done. But you remember how I said mining in the nether can be sort of hazardous on pocket edition? Well... I was tunneling, making good progress, but remember I'm on a phone, so my hand was in the way. I couldn't see the floor, and this happened. I knew I was dead and went through the five stages of grief the moment I hit the lava. I knew I would probably die in this video, but didn't really want to go out like that. At least it's not hardcore, so I don't have to start over, but the villagers saw me respawn, that's embarrassing. All right, I've got 28 potatoes and ambition. Let's see what I can do. Ah, yes, full diamond armor and tools. Better hope I don't fall any lava, though. Thanks to all my cave mining, I had more diamonds than coal, but now I need more coal. And diamonds, but I'll get them. Guess what day today is, cows? It's a big one. It's National Kill Your Parents and Take Their Skin Day, my favorite. I left the children. Killing them is fun but not profitable. That's about it. Put some more birthday candles down, I have a problem. Bunch of villagers decided to stop existing today. Awesome! I can handle the burning fingers and awful frame rate, but when the villagers despawn, it makes me want to quit. You know I won't quit. I get paid by the hundred, and I do this for the money. Oh wow, what riveting gameplay. It is Luke the Notable, chopping down trees in the forest. Hmm. I wonder what he'll do next. No loitering, chicken! Oh, let's check the sugarcane farm profits, by the way. One! Nice. Hey, the people are back, really questioning why I gave them their freedom. I found a nice cave entrance near town, might as well check it out. Add some coal in it, which I sell to the villagers, I'll always take that. And the villagers, well, they'll take what I give them, because I am their supreme overlord. Gonna do a little exploring, day 57. I don't want to go too far, I'm liable to get lost. I've got these diamond tools and this diamond armor, but it's not enchanted, and I need sugarcane if I want to do that. So I spent the day grabbing all I could. I'm gonna make a big farm. There's already a large potato farm in town, and I never really use it, so I'm just gonna to convert the whole thing. Done, and in a few more days, I'll be enchanting. But what I really, really still need is some form of automatic profit making, and I'm gonna start on that today. Just doing some digging today. I want it to be underground. It's definitely gonna be ugly. Got a room cleared out. Can you guess what it's gonna be? If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know I'm building an auto sheep farm. It's really the only thing that I can do effectively. At this point, most of it's dirt, but you really gotta see my vision. What's funny is I was incredibly ambitious with this thing. I built the collection system long enough to house like 20 20 sheep, and there's no way I'm gonna get that many. Look at this. I don't have a single sheep in this farm. <laughs> It's it's just too long. So sheep will live in this little pen, and as I breed them, I'll put them in the farm. What an awesome life. By this method, it's gonna take more than 100 days to get 20 sheep in there. I don't know why I was so ambitious. The blood moon must have been messing with my judgment. Oh, and that night I hunted some endermen, because I'm definitely gonna kill the dragon. Maybe even the wither. So keep watching. Before I get any sheep in, I've gotta get the farm working, and that's what I'm doing day 61. You hear that, sheep? You get to have jobs soon. How fun. <laughs> I was just getting the last few things for the sheep farm ready when my dad called. So this one's over. Listen, I know the sugarcane profits on this farm have been absolutely magnificent, but I need the observers, so it's getting decommissioned. And the villagers are gone again. I'm gonna have to figure out a different system. This is annoying. I don't know where they go. I'm so worried. All right, busting out the cobblestone, it's breeder time. With my limited experience of bedrock Minecraft, one thing that's always worked is breeding more than enough villagers, and that's what I'm doing now. It also seems to help to have a specific room where they all live, so they all have their own beds, they all know where their workstation is, no one gets scared and runs away. It doesn't have to look like a prison, but I like mine too. Tell me to stop in the comments. I won't. Oh, I agree, villagers. The atmosphere in this windowless cobblestone room is very romantic. Oh yeah, they really got to it. I am a love master. And I'm also a master of industry. Got my first sheep in the farm today. And my second sheep. They don't have feelings. It's just a game. More villagers, more problems. How did you even get in there? It's all right. Just don't let it happen again. I spent all day trying to get this shepherd to buy white wool from me and then killed him. 
Ugh, when I was trying to shoot a zombie. The nice thing about having lots of villagers is one took his place almost immediately. Oh yes, you're all very replaceable. Back in the nether, day 66, I thought it was appropriate. The bedrock nether spawns are actually wild. Why are there pigs here? Ah! Despite what happened to me earlier, I still want to beat the game, which means I have to find a fortress. I'm just gonna be extra careful. And after a solid day of tunneling with no lava incidents, I found myself a fortress. I made my own safety staircase all the way up to it. There's a lot of new stuff in there that I'm not sure I can handle on pocket. Again, I come back if I I die, but that doesn't mean I want to die. I'm gonna try to avoid it. And the bedrock spawns just don't care. They'll put two blazes right behind you. I got my safety staircase pretty airtight, so even with the blazes and these wither skeletons, I'm fairly safe here. But still, I'm not getting too comfortable. Really just came down here for blaze rods and nether wart, but got lucky and got a wither skeleton skull. Now I definitely have to fight Uncle Wilbur. My sugarcane farm's back up and running. Gotta love that one sugarcane per week. Tried to make it more efficient today. That was a mistake. Leveled up a new cleric day 69, and now will sell me his balls for five emeralds apiece. Then I got more sheep in the farm. You can see I stopped caring about looks and used cobblestone instead of glass. Then I lit up the top of the breeder, keeping it dark was just asking for an incident. I shoveled sand through the night. I'm gonna turn it into glass bottles so I can get more cleric balls. And I don't have to use my coal anymore for smelting. I've got this nice safe lava. And while waiting for the glass to smelt, my unfinished enchanting room was staring me right in the face. Oh yes, the blood moon is out. A perfect night for slaying. All right, guys, have a good night. See you when you grow up. Got my enchanting hole functional and copped fortune two. That'll help a bunch. Got to mining day 71. The fortune enchantment's very overpowered in the new versions of Minecraft. It's nice though. I don't feel like I have to make a gold or iron farm. If I want gold or iron, I can just mine and it's still pretty effective. Yeah, I don't really need to mine. I don't need diamonds, but I kept mining cause you know, might as well have fortune. Well, I will be fighting the ender dragon and wither by the end of this video. And I kind of thought it'd be nice to have a backup set of armor if I died. And I stayed down here in the mines because it's just pretty. I mean, look at that. Even on pocket edition, it's nice. Here there's a mine shaft interconnected with this giant dripstone cave. It makes me want to do 100 days in caves only. Though to be honest, if I did a caves only 100 days, I guarantee you by the end of them, I would really hate the caves. So maybe I shouldn't. I think it's possible for sure. You might have to survive on zombie flesh for a while, but I think you could survive to 100 days. Anyway, day 75, I finally surfaced and realized that I am lost. Probably shouldn't have waited until day 75 to figure out how coordinates work. I have no idea where Ohio is. I don't even know if I'm going in the right direction, but I do have two stacks of diamonds. I think I'll be okay. I figured trying to find Ohio at this point would be almost impossible. I have no idea where to even start, so I just went to zero zero. The plan for now is to set up a shelter and maybe try to get back through the nether. I was hopeful that might work. And to look on the bright side, my zero zero shack marked with a diamond block is kind of cool. I have a dirt roof because most of my inventory is filled with riches. I really don't have plans to stay here for very long, but I gotta make it look nice. I'm in full diamond. I can't be living in that. And I was dealing with the possibility that I might never find Ohio. I might have to call this place home. So I spent today doing some safety stuff, clearing the area, leveling, putting down torches, and the dirt roof stays because it's up to safety code. On my way to zero zero, I did see a pool of lava, so I'm gonna use that to get obsidian for another portal. After getting back, I didn't go straight to the nether. I did take some time to slab the roof. I didn't want it to be dirt, even though it is safe, technically. All right, portal's lit. Let's hope my plan work. Oh yeah, popped out right by the nether fortress. I know exactly where I am. I'm going home to Ohio. Ugh. Had to go back to the zero zero shack for one last night. I had some ore that was smelting. Awesome, I made it back to Ohio, said no one ever. First thing I did was expand my storage. I'm rich now, haha. -ha. Then I did some light enchanting. My true power will be realized soon. If the villagers ever try to Google what happens on day 79, their internet cuts out and this is why. There were just a few of them that had jobs but wouldn't work and they got what they deserved. I honestly don't know why I went mining. Day 80, I have more than enough diamonds, iron, and gold. Really didn't need to, but I did. Maybe I did it for the XP, but even I know the XP isn't that great when you're mining. Yeah, because I'm on something else entirely. Day 81, I'm trying to get a mending librarian. Got one, so now when I craft good armor, it'll never break. That's nice. To make good armor, I still need a stack of levels, and most of my money-making methods involve hard labor, so that's what I'm doing. Day 82, I really shouldn't be chopping this far into the video, but here I am. I'm sick of hard labor though, so I'm gonna try to make my life a little easier. I converted one of the villager huts to a villager 
Hydra Infector like I did in 69 days. It's pretty simple, really. Yeah, and hopefully I should be able to use this to make an infected shepherd and make bank. Oh yeah, worked flawlessly. Started curing my first shepherd tonight. My wool farm doesn't produce that much wool, but each piece of wool is worth an emerald, so that's pretty awesome. So now I have the XP to essentially enchant whatever I want. The dragon's going down. Nothing happened, day 86. Absolutely nothing. Stop asking. I was doing anything and everything for XP, even bottles of enchanting, and I never use those. It's not even the dragon I'm really worried about. It's the wither. He's supposed to be awful on bedrock. I cared not whomstiv got in my way. I burned this master farmer because he wouldn't sell me golden carrots and I need him. Here we go. It's the beginning of the end. I'm in the nether fortress looking for wither skeletons. I only need two skulls and I have looting two on my sword, so I shouldn't have to be down here that long, but I wanted to make sure I had everything before I started bossing. And I'm just gonna cut to it. By the end of day 90, I had both skulls. I'm ready to fight. Back to tunneling day 91. I'm trying to find a cheeky piece of netherite. There's a blackstone fortress. Might be one in there. It'd be nice to have a more powerful sword. That's the only reason I'm here. Not because I like the squeedles of innocent piglins defending their home. Unfortunately, I didn't find any netherite pieces. I will say there was more to this fortress that I just didn't explore because I didn't want to. Back home, day 92, just grabbing everything for the ender dragon fight. It's good to take a solid day for this. Now that I'm ready, it's time to find the end portal and I better hurry because there isn't much time. Joyously jaunted to a jungle on my journey and jumped with jubilation. There was even a naturally spawning jungle town, which I didn't think was even possible and the end portal's gonna be right near it. Dug into the fortress and wasn't even worried. I've got full protection, diamond armor, I'll be fine. Took me a while to find the end portal, but when I did, I was glad I bought tons of ender eyes because it needed 12. Just gonna make another portal for some easy access from Ohio. All right, gonna check that this works. Oh no. It's totally my fault. I know that the bedrock portals aren't always perfect. I was still upset though. It's not that bad at the end of the day. I took the coordinates so I know where I'm going in the nether. Just a little inconvenient. After that small detour, now it's time to fight the ender dragon. I think I'll be okay. It's not my first time anyway. I didn't put a pumpkin on my head because Pocket already doesn't have the best visuals and that would have just made it worse. I'm so prepared that the worst part was definitely just trying to shoot all of the crystals. The Pocket Edition bow is, it's just not good. My armor's fantastic, so I'm very, very bulky, but I'm also very, very clunky, so it made doing a lot of this stuff pretty tough. Even just bashing the crystal was kind of a struggle, and of course, none of it's helped by my burning fingers. It was a long fight. It took me a full day's worth of time just to get the crystals destroyed. Imagine fighting a dragon for multiple days. That's what I put my Minecraft character through. If you fought the dragon before, you'll know once you get to this point where you're slashing it, it's pretty much over. Just a matter of time. I had no goals and no plans when I started playing Pocket Edition almost 100 days ago, but now, seeing the Ender Dragon die in front of me, I'm feeling quite proud. I feel like I normally get more XP from killing the dragon. Are they discriminating against us pocket kids? There's really no point to grabbing the dragon egg because it's a useless item, but why can't I stop myself from grabbing it every single time? Now I'm gonna try to get an elytra, if it's easy. I'm really not gonna try too hard. It's not that I don't want one, I just don't have a lot of time, and I guarantee you I'll crash and die. Sometimes you can get lucky and go through these end gateways and get an easy free elytra, but this time it didn't look like that was gonna happen. Of course, I didn't give up immediately. My phone's render distance could just be messing with me, but it doesn't look like there's any cities nearby. So I just went back to the portal. I can always get an Elytra in 200 days of Pocket Edition if that happens. Would you even want that? Let me know in the comments below. After getting home, I went straight to my storage and geared up for fighting the Wither. This is the one that I'm a little worried about. Ultimately, if I die, it's not like the whole world is deleted, and a part of me knew that and wasn't too worried. I didn't go in like an idiot, though. I took the precautions of a normal Wither fight, at bedrock. I think that'll work. And the tunnel I dug was way longer than I normally would. I'm on a phone. I kind of got to make up for it. It's bedrock wither time. From the moment I started fighting this thing, I could tell it was going to be a nightmare. This thing hits like an absolute truck. The Java wither, you can pretty much just out heal with golden carrots and golden apples, but not this one. If you get hit, you're drinking that milk. The explosions it makes also seem to be way bigger. I've never seen a Java wither make this big of a hole. I almost got it down to half health, but was on my last milk bucket and it hit me, so I had to to run. As I was cobbling up to the surface, I was really wondering what I was even doing here. Got back down with a lot more milk, and thankfully the wither didn't heal too much. I think I should be able to handle this. That is until I got him to have health. He exploded, and wither skeletons popped out. What? I didn't know that was gonna happen. I'm sorry, bedrock boys. I didn't listen. This is awful. After collecting myself, I got back in the fight. Normally on Java, this part's pretty easy. You just slash him, and he's dead before you know it. I don't know what I was doing wrong here. I was trying to slash him. I'm gonna blame the fact that I was on a phone. Ugh, it was annoying. What it boils down to 
as I wasn't prepared for the ferocity of the bedrock wither, and it bested me. My escape tunnel was gone, the room was filling with lava, and yeah, I died. I know I said earlier that I respawn, and it's not too bad, because, you know, the world isn't deleted, but part of me wanted it to be deleted. Alright, I know for a fact I'm not gonna kill that thing, especially without my gear, but this is Operation Get My Stuff Back. The plan's to drop in, grab my stuff, and cobblestone my way out, if it's even still there. Yeah, I found none of my stuff. Some XP, but that's probably from dead mobs. Well, might as well mine some diamonds while I wait for my inevitable death. Oh, here it comes, lovely. And then... He died. Yeah, this seems like a perfect time to leave Ohio forever. Grabbed all my valuable possessions, took one last look, and then dipped out of there. I'm gonna start a new life at the Zero Zero Shack, because I feel like the Wither will eventually consume Ohio. This'll be a good new life. I didn't even realize it's right next to a Badlands. If the audience wants it, I would play more. I definitely would love to have vengeance on that Wither. Ohio needs me. They're in grave danger. Well, first I gotta go tend to my finger burns. Stay notable. See you in the next one.